This is a playthrough video of uh, Airfix Battles, which is a multiplayer game, but uh, which also includes a solo mode. This is the first scenario, which is called Link Up with HQ or Halter Allied Breakthrough, depending on which side we're gonna play. This game has 10 different scenarios. Not all of them are suitable for co-op, like for example the last scenario is a 4 player battle, a 4 player scenario. So uh, that would mean that you would have to use the bot for 3 of the 2 of your opponents and your ally and I think that would be quite a hassle. We have the solo rules which are really not even one page long, I would say they're about two thirds of a page long. And then you have the chart for controlling your um, enemy behavior for solo play so quite neat quite simple uh, like i said we're playing the first scenario the first scenario is quite simple we are starting with infantry uh, and i have to say right away that this is the first time that i play a multiplayer game which has a solo option all solitaire games i've played have been pure solo games or co-op games at most like for example airborne in your pocket and d-day dice so it's a little bit strange for me this game like for example we see here in the beginning of the first scenario uh, i will take the camera down a bit and these are our starting forces these are the allies and these are the axes and in this specific scenario it's already decided in the scenario uh, what starting units you're gonna have the allies are gonna have a captain with uh, veterans and two infantry squads and the germans are gonna have a captain with veterans and two grenadier squads basically they're the same thing uh, so in this in other scenarios you have you see these little stars here in the corner that's the cost of these units and in some scenarios you're gonna have for example 10 uh, stars to buy units with or 20 stars and then you have to decide for both yourself and your enemy basically uh, what what things to buy so I'm not really used to that uh, you know because when I play solo games everything is decided for me when it comes to the enemy player and I know some of you guys who play solo for a long time are used to playing for example like two-handed I'm a big fan of memoir 44 uh, and there's a lot of people playing that game uh, who, who are having a hard time finding someone to play with so instead of playing with uh, solo uh, rules they're just playing two-handed so they're basically playing or really they are playing against uh, themselves you know and for me, I, I, I don't enjoy it and I don't get it. I don't understand the point because if I'm, if I'm playing against a live opponent memoir 44, for example, uh, I feel like, you know, I have to react to whatever they're doing and they can change their tactics and whatever. And if I'm playing a solo game, it's a little bit like playing a PC game against, uh, against the computer, uh, but obviously not so advanced and there is usually this kind of puzzle like in Field Commander Rommel you kind of have to figure out what you're supposed to do which units you're gonna have to buy to beat the game to beat the the enemy that exists here is a little bit different because you have to choose starting units you have to choose where to start them where to deploy them and so on so you you do have to do some choices for your enemy and that's weird to me because I'm not used to it and basically what it is is that this isn't supposed to be played solo it's a nice uh, two-player game a nice four-player game which includes some very simple rules uh, if you don't have a friend over and still want to play a game of airfix battles so with that in mind uh, I think it's a I mean, uh, I think I would enjoy this game quite a lot with, with a friend, but it's not very enjoyable for me because I'm not used to the style of the AI bot. So, And why I'm choosing my words carefully here is because I don't want to trash this game. I don't think it's a bad game. It's just not made 
for a solo player like me. It's a two-player game with a solo mode. So anyway, now that we have that out of the way, we're gonna start playing. Okay. So again, we're playing the first scenario and we have... Uh, both of the teams have one uh, captain, uh, one veterans and two infantry squads. The Germans and the Axis. I've chosen to just put them out uh, the same way for both teams. I have the infantry squads covering the veterans and the commander in the middle. And the victory conditions on this map is number of rounds are unlimited. We're at the crossroads, which is the map. And the victory condition is uh, first play to get three stars will win. And to get three stars, basically you have to annihilate uh, units worth three stars. So for example, you can see here the captain is worth three stars. So if I were to take him out, I would win the game. The infantry squads are two stars. If I would take these two guys out, that would be four stars. I would win. Uh, so anyway, that's we have some cover and stuff and I'll explain that stuff as we go. Uh, the first thing we need to do now is roll to see uh, who I'm gonna play as because that's this thing I, I I don't know beforehand so I put uh, I I choose my usually I would choose my troops but not in this scenario because in this scenario it already tells us our units so I don't have to choose units but I do have to choose where to deploy them and then once I've done that I have to uh, roll to see which side I'm gonna play as so. I'll take this here and if it's one to three I'm gonna play to as the allies if it's four to six I'm gonna play as the axis and it's a two so I'm gonna go ahead and play as the allies and then once I'm done I have done that I'm gonna have to roll for initiative and that's done uh, at the first the first thing you do of every turn so this is gonna be the allies, my dice, and this is gonna be the axis. And the one who rolls the highest has the initiative and gets to start. And we're, uh, the axis roll a six, I roll a five, so the axis is gonna start this turn. And we're gonna draw cards. And first of all, I am gonna go ahead and draw five cards for me. This is gonna be my hand. So I have just, there are interrupt cards and there are order cards and these are, all of them are ordered cards. So I'm going to explain it later. I'm going to save these, that's my starting hand. And you might wonder now, okay, how do you know that you have uh, five cards in your hand? Well, I know that because of my uh, captain, which... I can see here my hand will be four with this guy. If I would have two captain, captains, it would be eight. And then you always have one as a base uh, from like your army. So it's one plus five. So I have five in my uh, hand. And the two means that I can play two cards every turn or every round. And I also also have one in base value, so that's one plus two, that's three. So I have a five hand and a free. Uh, I can play three cards every um, every round. And then if I had one more captain, it would be uh, one plus four plus four, if you get what I mean. So it would be nine in my. I could have in my hand. Anyway, uh, I have my hand now, my five cards. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and draw now for the axis which is gonna start and we draw an open up card and this is how simple it is when I draw an order card all I have to do is go here and read it open up choose an enemy vehicle uh, unit that is in range of one of your vehicles okay there are no vehicles so I can do that so otherwise, choose an enemy infantry unit and attempt to move to within two squares of one of your units and fire at it. Okay. Uh, my infantry is quite far away, so it's not going to be able to do this order. 
uh, which would be then uh, to move within two squares of your units and fire at it. And whenever there's an order here that you can't do, you will just do the default order. The default order is choose an enemy infantry unit, move as far as possible towards the nearest cover, then fire. Otherwise choose an enemy vehicle unit, move into firing range and fire at your weakest unit. So we have no vehicles in this uh, specific scenario, so it's going to be an enemy infantry unit. Move as far as possible towards the nearest cover, then fire. Okay, here is where, it's, where it gets a little bit weird for me again, because I have to choose the infantry unit. And as I'm used to playing solo games, I'm used to trying to manipulate the game to make the game easier for me because I want to win, right? So if I would have this option in a solo game, I would choose this uh, squad here to, to move him forward because I want to kill this guy, right? So I, wa I want him to be the one. But if I was really trying to help the, the bot, I would move one of the infantry units towards cover, which would make more sense. Uh, but since I don't really know what to do here, should I do an option that helps me or should I do an option that helps the, my enemy? It feels strange. None of them feels right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll, instead of choose one of these units, I'm going to roll a dice to see which one is going to uh, go. And we have uh, one, two and three. So whatever comes up first will go and we roll a two. So it's going to be this guy, he's going to move uh, towards cover, and this is going to be the cover, and he's going to stay there. He can't fire in any of my units. You might also wonder, okay, how far can they move? And we see here he has a 2 in movement value, and uh, 1 square is 1 movement, but to go inside of uh, cover or into rough terrain, it costs two movement points, so he can just go uh, adjacent to the building. So that's the turn of the enemy, and I'm gonna go ahead then now and discard this card, and then it's gonna be my turn. And I have five cards which I can play. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna play. Alright, I have decided to play Lightning Strike, which is a special order. One unit may move with two plus in movement points and then fire once. I'm gonna go ahead and use my second squad, uh, which are my infantry squad. Uh, we see that they have a two in movement value, so I will have four because this one gives me plus two. So they are gonna move one, two, Three, four, into the rough terrain. And this is just to keep track of who this guy is. Now, uh, my infantry has a four in uh, weapon range with the rifles and light machine guns. One, two, three, four. I can now open up on the enemy captain and the enemy infantry squad. And more than that, we also see that my American Infantry Squad has American Firepower. The unit gains one extra attack dice when making any attack against infantry. So we're going to be able to roll a lot of dice. So basically now how this works is that the unit consists of 10 men. So I get to roll 10 dice when I attack. If I would have taken two casualties, it would be 8 dice. And then I have one more dice because of my American firepower. So it's going to be 11 dice totally. I only have 10 here. So I'm going to roll them and then I'm going to just re-roll one of the misses. What I need now also to hit the enemy is... So this is my uh, infantry or my unit value, which is 5. So I need a 5 or a 6 to be able to hit. So any 5 or 6 will will be a hit on the enemy which I'm firing upon, which is the, the German captain and the veterans. So I fired and quite a lot of hits. We have at least four hits here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll one because I have the American firepower which will give me one plus dice. I only rolled 10, it would be 11. And it's a miss, but I have four hits. Okay, so the four hits are enough to take out these four 
uh, veterans. That means the veteran card is now uh, annihilated and I will get this card because I've taken them out. So I have now one star out of uh, three which I need to win. But then there's also morale in this game, which I will explain now. Okay, so basically you have morale and you can track the morale with your card. Uh, they can be, they start with A-OK -okay and they will be upside, uh, or sorry, they will be at the correct side. If they get pinned, they will go to this side, you can read pinned. Or if they have to retreat, they will go upside down and it will say retreat. So you will do morale, ch morale checks on the enemy if they take two or more hits or if uh, more than when they take a hit if it's at half strength or less. So that captain was part of the uh, veterans unit so they took more than two hits and uh, it, obviously it's more than um, or less than half strength so he's gonna have to do two morale checks the captain has a four sorry down here the captain has a four in his uh, unit value which means to take the morale check he needs to have a higher roll than four to be able to pass if he gets one less he's gonna take one morale damage or whatever you one morale penalty so i'm going to roll two dice now again one for uh taking out two or more units uh, or two or more men in his unit and one for taking out the unit when it's at half strength so we're all a two and a four he has a four in his value but that means that he did take one um one morale hit so he's now pinned Okay, so we have done what we intended to do, and I'm going to go ahead now and draw again for the German side. And we draw a lightning strike. I also forgot to mention that, I will show you down here that... Uh, I have noted here the card on the Grenadiers that use that card and my infantry squad that use that card. Each unit can only be activated once and the Axis will use all of their units before the game is over. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead now and go to the next part. Uh, the, the Axis draw a lightning strike. Uh, choose an enemy infantry unit. Attempt to move uh, to within range of the nearest target. In include the lightning strike bonus and fire. And we can see here the lightning strike gave us a plus two in movement. So number three has all uh, sorry number two has already been activated. So it can only be number one and number three. So we're gonna roll now to see which is gonna be doing the order. We roll a two. That's already been activated. A four, there's no use. Uh, two again. Again, we need a one or a three. And it's a one. Again, this is where it gets a little bit weird, but uh, okay, this is guy is gonna take a chance and he's gonna move uh, plus two and fire. And let's read that order again. Lightning strike. Choose an enemy infantry unit, attempt to move within range of the nearest target, including light strike bonus and fire. So I'm just going to be within range. And I have a submachine gun, so I only need to be in range 3 with, uh, with this guy. But actually, what since this guy is uh, pinned, what I have to do first now is to see if he can pass a morale check. If he can pass it, he's going to be able to carry out the order. If he can pass it, he's going to stay pinned. Uh, sorry, down here you can see he's pinned. He's going to stay pinned and uh, the order is going to be wasted. So a four or higher to pass his morale check. Yeah, we're all a six. So the captain is no longer pinned. He's A-OK -okay and he gets to execute the order which has been given. So he's moving into range with the uh, closest infantry target, which is is my paratroopers. And he's going to go ahead and fire with his... Actually, he doesn't even need to move because he's already in range. 
and he's gonna fire with his assault rifle and he gets to reroll for each miss when firing at adjacent squares but uh, they're not adjacent so he's just gonna get to fire and he gets to fire one little dice at my guys and he needs a four or higher since he since his uh, unit value is again four he doesn't get that he rolls a one so he has missed and then I uh, put a card under him to remember that that unit has been activated this turn and can be activated again until next turn. Okay, so it's my turn again. So then you have these cards and on the back of them you have actually basic orders. So if you can't really find a card which you want to use, uh, you can go ahead and use the back, which is just move, fire, or reinforce. So we're going to go ahead and use this one on our uh, infantry squad number three, which is standing here behind cover. And we're going to go ahead and move them into cover. And again, I'm putting this card under my uh, number three infantry squad to remember that this guy or these guys have been activated. Okay, time for the Germans to go again. Drawing a card here. Uh, again, it's uh, a special order. It's Commando Assault. So again, we have to go to our little checklist here. Commando Assault. Choose an enemy infantry, uh, enemy vehicle or infantry unit that is in assault distance of one of your infantry units, including uh, the bonus from Commando Assault and Assault that unit. We'll see the Commando Assault. One unit may fire once, then move with 2+, plus. rough terrain cost 1 to enter. Okay, so basically the only unit that can be activated now is number 3, because number 1 and 2 has already been activated. And let's see if he, he has a 2 in basic movement value, and this is going to be plus 2, so he's going to have 4, but... One, two, three, four. Oh, he's actually going to be able to do a close assault. And that's, I think, what it said, yeah? And assault that unit. Yes. And you can move through friendly units. This is one, two, three, four. And usually this uh, rough terrain would be uh, cost, uh, cost um, two movement points to enter. But I'm guessing since this says... Uh, that it cost one to enter and the uh, instructions here says uh, that it's in assault distance of one of your infantry units including the distance from commando assault I'm guessing that's also for the enemy when using this so now we're gonna go ahead and do an assault so the assault in this game is kind of interesting because what will happen now is a few turns and my units here are actually gonna be able to start by doing a defensive action and they're going to be able to do a defensive fire basically i'm just gonna get now to roll 11 dice against these attackers and again my uh, uh, inventory squad has the four in um, in their value i'm just going to keep the camera there for now and i roll uh, sorry they have the five in their uh, unit value so i roll three five and then I get to re-roll one of my dice because, remember, I have the American Firepower, which uh, gains one, uh, one extra uh, dice on infantry, and it's a one, so I miss. But I do get three hits, which means that three of these guys uh, are out of action. Three of the German guys. And there we go. Now the German guys get to fire back at me. And... Because the Germans have taken uh, two, um, or actually they've taken three casualties, they're gonna have to only fire now seven dice instead of ten. Because remember, they get to shoot one dice uh, for every uh, man they have. And they have the same value as the infantry squad. The grenadiers, they have five, so they need five or higher to hit my infantrymen. And they seem to get a good deal here. Yeah, they get four four hits on my guys. 
And then what happens is I actually get to go again. I ha get to do a counter assault, but I've taken four hits. That means I only have now six uh, dice to defend myself with. And I don't do very good. I do decent. I take out two of the German guys. So now uh, at the end of the battle, I've taken four casualties and the German guy, the Grenadiers, have taken, let's see, five. So we have done our uh, defensive fire, we have done our assault, and then we have done our uh, counter assault. And now we have to do our morale checks. So the German player has lost more than two, he lost five, and he has lost one man, which have led him to uh, his unit having half strength. So he's gonna have to two, do two morale checks, and to pass them, he's gonna have to roll five or higher. He roll a one and a two, that's bad, because that means he goes first to pinned, and then finally he goes to retreating. When a unit is retreating, he must move immediately two squares away from the enemy. And he has to be at least one uh, square away from his closest enemy. Again, now we are having a little bit of trouble, like, okay, where am I gonna go? Uh, basically, I'm gonna play it simple. When my enemy is retreating, I'm just gonna go straight back to his line of deployment. So one, two. So this guy retreats back here. Now it's time for me to take my morale checks for my last man. And I didn't go uh, to half my strength. I'm still at six men and five will obviously be the half strength. But I did take four hits. So I'm gonna have to do one morale check. And I roll a four. So I do fail my morale check. I go uh, from A-OK -okay to pinned. Meaning I can't use uh, any orders for these guys. And it's gonna be now, uh, I'm putting this uh, under the retreated enemy, uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do my last, play my last card, and I have three more cards, uh, and I have to choose one to play. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose dig in special order. Choose an infantry unit, in the open and place dig in under its card. The unit gains a hard cover save for each hit. So I'm gonna do that on my captain with his attached veterans. So this guy is now uh, in cover even though he's actually out in the open. He has chosen to dig in and I do this because I wanna keep my my officer safe and sound. Okay, so that's the end of the round now. Uh, we played uh, for, uh, for all of my units and for all of his units. And that means that we're gonna have to go back now uh, to, uh, to the... Basically, the sequence of play is four rounds. You draw command cards, roll for initiative, play your command cards, take in turn, and then it's cleanup. So we're doing the cleanup now, and what that means is I can choose if I want to discard uh, one of the cards uh, that's still on my hand. I don't. I want to save them. But we have to discard the cards that have been used. So we're discarding all of these cards except the card which is under my captain because that's a, a lasting effect he's dug in in cover okay so these cards are discarded and then i will draw up to my hand which is five so i now have uh, five cards and again special orders but i do get a new card that we haven't seen and that's the interrupt card uh, and this is played during my opponent's turn. So one unit may move during an enemy move. The unit may not declare an assault. So I can move basically at the same time. These, these cards are obviously made for uh, multiplayer games. They are a little bit tricky to play with the bot, but it's, it's certainly doable. Anyway, so I have my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and put down my hand here. This is the discard pile and the deck. 
I'm gonna roll for initiative again to see who will start. Again, the dark green is the axis, the light green is the allies. Highest number wins, and I do manage to win there. Very nice, okay. So I think pretty much I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to take out their captain. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is pretty pretty a good one. Open up. One infantry unit with rifles may move, then firing using the rifles. Reroll once for each miss when firing at a target within two squares. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. I'm gonna move these guys up here. Actually, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I am gonna move them up, and I'm gonna stay there. I am unfortunately I am not uh, within uh, two squares because I am gonna target the captain, but uh, I hope I'm gonna do okay anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this card under my squad number two. So I'm gonna go roll for attacks now, and I have to count my units. I believe they are six. One, two, three, four. Yes, five, six. So I get again one dice for each attacker. So I'm gonna get six dice. But again, the American infantry squads have the American firepower, giving them one extra dice. So I'm gonna go ahead now and see if I can win this game because if I do elim eliminate this uh, German captain, I have won. So I'm firing now with seven dice. I need a five or higher to hit and I get two fives so I get two hits. But the game is not over because the captain has an ability hero if hit always get a hard cover save using his uh, unit value. So he have two hits so I'm gonna roll two dice. If both of them are four or higher he has been able to uh, take cover from those sh uh, hits. So if each of these are four or higher he's saved. If one of them is lower than four he has been killed and I have one. Ooh, look at that he was unlucky. A two and a three. He couldn't save himself. He has been a casualty of the war and that means he's now KIA and I receive this unit card to see that I've won. Okay, we can see now that I have the both the, the captain dead and the veterans. So I've uh, won uh, four stars uh, from the enemy AI and remember three stars uh, is what's needed to win. So I have actually won this scenario. Uh, I have to say, I think it's, uh, <laughs> I still enjoy it, I think it's a fun game, and again, this is the first scenario, it's very basic, it uh, skips a bunch of rules, because you don't have vehicles, you don't have AT guns, you don't have weapons teams like the mortars and machine guns, and the other scenarios, you have to use two of these maps, so it's also bigger, Um other than that, there are some covers that you get to put up. Uh, I believe it's like three covers or something uh, per team uh, in scenario two and forward. So this is very basic. So uh, I think uh, I am still going to have quite a lot of fun uh, discovering what's next. Uh, so yeah, guys, stay tuned. Uh, more videos of Airfix Battles are going to come out. Uh, I am new to this game. I have tried reading the rules quite a few times. Uh, they're not very heavy. I mean, there's a lot of pictures and stuff in it, but some some parts are a little bit confusing to me with the solo bot, uh, since I'm not used to playing, again, uh, this kind of multiplayer game with a AI mode. So if you saw me, um, maybe some of you guys uh, love this game and know every rule, if you saw me do an error or something like that, uh, let everybody know in the comments because I guess some people are watching this to learn how to play the game and then you can just go to the comments and see uh, some more experienced player uh, telling us about it. So anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and um, stay tuned for more. Bye.